So I wanted to show you what the actual 3D print of this thing looks like. So here's the actual egg that 3D printed. We can see that we can unscrew it and screw it back in. This is, let's take a look at the inside though. So you can see here's the bottom and here's the top. We've got nice little threads on there. So we're going to create this egg. You saw kind of a 3D printed version of it, but here is the fusion version of it as well. Go ahead and pull it apart so you can see it. So you can see we have a top part and a bottom. Let's go ahead and let's get started. We will start by just creating a new file and we're going to save it and let's just call it threaded egg. I'm going to call mine threaded egg two because I've already done this project before. So after we do that, we're going to take a look at the sketch. So let's see if we can pull a side by side on them. All right, so here is a side by side. And the reason we want to do that is just so it's easier numbers for you. All right, so I'm going to start by going into sketch and just clicking a sketch plane. So there's that XY plane. Here we're going to go with a circle and I'll start this circle off just like the side sketch says at 2.5. I'll create another sketch. I'm going to go just above it and this will be a two. And let's go ahead and make that third sketch up here. We want to follow that same line and we'll say this one will be 1.5. And now we'll go and we'll dimension in between the center points. So I'm just gonna press D for dimension. So center point to center point, that's gonna be 0 0.75. And then from the bottom center point, so the big circle center point to the top, that's gonna be 1.375. So there we go. I will go ahead and fully constrain this. So I'm going to use my horizontal vertical here, and I'm just going to take the center points and constrain those together. So I'm just taking center point to the, the origin, essentially. Notice how they turn black. That means it's fully constrained there. Now I'm going to take a line tool, or I can press L for line, and I'm really going to really connect this side. So I'm going to draw a line between the two circles. And we've done similar things to this before. I'll go up to the geometric constraint area and I'm just going to use tangent. So there's tangent. I'll click the line in the circle. You see we have a tangent here. And I also already have a tangent here as well. So I can do that. Click this line in this circle. There's tangent there. And do the same thing down here. Now if we look in the sketch here, you see I have a 0.25 right up here. And down at the bottom I have a 0.5. Those, or if you want, especially on the 0.5, if you want the egg to be able to stand, you're going to need to have some sort of flat surface. All right, for 3D printing, we actually would 3D print the standing up, and I'll show you how to do that as well. For the video, I'm not going to use the 0.25 or the 0.5. I'm just going to leave them out. Uh, so one last step that we have to do on this sketch is we have to draw a straight up and down line because we're going to revolve this. So I'll click the line tool. And sometimes it's really hard to get up here and say, all right, that's the middle. So I'll just say, all right, I kind of gathered this, this origin. And then I'm going to go up here. Now it turns into a nice little X. And I can draw that all the way through. And then I'll click Finish Sketch. So it kind of looks a little crazy right now. And I could have went in there and trimmed everything out. But there's really no need to. I'm going to maximize this because we're done with the sketch. So I'll go to Revolve, and I'm going to click every shape over here. So don't forget about these little shapes right here. So everything to the right of that line, I'm going to click. And then I'll select Axis, and I'm just going to click that straight up and down line that we drew last, and click OK. So now we have our egg. The next thing to do is we need to split this thing in half. So I'm going to turn the origin back on over here. And there's all my planes that pop back up. OK, that's perfect. I'll go up to Construct. And I'm going to click on the origin plane there. And I'm going to drag it up. And I want that to be 0.4 inches up. So 0.4 inches up, there is that plane. I'm going to use that to do the split. So up here in the Modify section, here is split body. I use it quite frequently. So if it doesn't show up for you, go to modify and then choose split body. So you say, all right, what body do I want to split? Well, I'm going to split the egg. For splitting tools, now we're going to click select. And we need to click that plane that we just drew. I'm going to have a really hard time clicking it over here. But what I can do 
over here in this construction section, I'll expand that a little bit, and there's that plane that we just put in. All right, so I went over here, expanded it, and clicked plane. Now I can click OK. So what I've done is I've split that object. Now if I look in bodies, I have two bodies. I have body one, which is the bottom half, and body two, which is the top half. I'm going to kind of right click on body one here and then say rename. And I'm just going to say bottom half. I'm going to right click on body two and I'm going to rename. And I'll say top half. All right. Now, before we get going too crazy, we want to turn these into components. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to right click on bottom half and say create components from bodies. I'm going to right click on top half and say create components from bodies. So now when I look here, I have two full components. Before I get going crazy here, I want to go ahead and let's turn this construction area off. Let's turn that origin. I guess we don't really need it, so I'm going to turn it back off the visibility. I am going to change my visual settings down here, my display. I'll go to visual style, and I'm going to say shaded with visible edges. That I use to help me a lot like when I'm making the parts. So let's go ahead, I'll pull this apart. So there's a top half and a bottom half. What I think we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn the bottom half, we'll turn that visibility off. And I'm gonna select the top half, I'm gonna activate that top half component. So now I'll right click it, or I'll rotate it around. My next step, I'm gonna to go to shell. And if you don't see the shell icon, remember, click modify, and there's shell right there. We'll click this face and I'm going to say, let's make it point 0.1. So I've shelled that to be point 0.1. Next, I'll go to sketch and I'm going to click the upper face here and we'll click capture position for that in case we need to go back on it later. But you can kind of see the sketch plane I'm on here. Click that bottom level, square it up, and draw a circle right smack dab in the middle. And this is going to be point 0.5. And I'm going to press E for extrude. I'm going to click it. And over here for extent type, where it says distance now, I'm going to say to object. And I'm going to click that face right there. And it's going to extrude straight to that face. It's not going to go through it at all. It's going to be perfect. Next up, we'll go ahead and throw a fillet on this bottom edge here because I want to make that as strong as I can. So I'll go to fillet up here. Again, if it's not there, click modify and choose fillet. Click on that and let's say 0.125. That'll add a little more rigidity up there. Now we need to thread this. So to do a thread, you're going to go to create and you're going to choose thread. We are going to click the face here. So the outside of that. Now there's some options I got to make sure I do here. I do want to make sure this is modeled. And for full length, I want to uncheck that. Now, if for some reason, you know, you get this and it, it, it does a full length, like down here, you're going to have to play around with your offsets to get it up here. Right? Mine worked perfectly, so I can leave it at zero. For length, I'm going to say 0.5. I am going to make one other change here. What we found out is on the designation, so the thread type, using the uh, half 14, tends to do a better job on the 3D printing aspect. Okay, so we, we did modify that number. And we'll go ahead and click OK. So we have the top part taken care of. Now we're going to make the bottom. So to do that bottom part, we're going to head turn the visibility back on on the bottom half. And I'm going to turn the visibility of the top half off. And then I'm going to activate bottom half so I'm working with just that so there's the bottom half now I'm gonna go ahead and shell it so the process is gonna be very very similar to what we just did the shell here is gonna be point one as well I'm gonna go to sketch I'm gonna click that outside here we'll add the circle now we're gonna make a ring here so this is actually gonna end up being an inside thread so the inside circle is gonna be 0.51 I'm going to do another circle outside of that that is 0.625. Right. Similar process. Now I'm going to press E for extrude. I'm going to click the ring. 
And I'm going to say for distance, I'll say to object, click the inside of that. Right? And that goes ahead and it takes it all the way down into that inside. We'll click OK. Now on that original egg, we actually need this piece to come outside the egg a little bit. So I'm going to do one more quick extrude here. I'm going to take that ring and I'm going to go out 0.5. So now if I rotate this, you can see it looks something like that. Now we're going to add the threads. So we'll say create. And we'll go to thread. We'll click that inside area. We're going to choose modeled again. Again, this doesn't need to be full length. It's not going to hurt it if you do make it full length, but it doesn't need to be full length. Uh, for offset, this is there. It's perfect. It's right where it's supposed to be. But remember, I can change that if I need to. For length, I need to make it 0.5. And I need to make sure that I match the threads, right? So half 14. And really everything else can stay the same. We'll go ahead and click OK. Remember, just from the aspect of strength, we want to go ahead and put a fillet in and fill it right down here and say 0.125. That'll give it a little more strength there. So we'll click OK. And now we do have our two parts model. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the visibility of the top half on. And I'm going to activate the entire component now, so or the entire piece. So now if I look, I can drag the two parts of the egg around. I will go ahead and show you how to do the joint on this thing. So I'll go up to joints. If you can't see that, you can go to a symbol and say joint, or you can press the J key. So I'll come in here. I'm going to hover on that ring, and if you look real close, you'll see the dot show up, and that's what I really want. So there it is. You can kind of see that dot in there in the center of that. I'll click that and I'm going to come down here. Now this was slightly different. I'm going to do the same thing here, really. Notice the dot is going to show up right about in here when I get it, when I get it set up correctly. So now I click that, we'll put them together. Now I've already used for me in the last one, my motion was already set to cylindrical. So that's why you saw it slide. Yours probably didn't do that because yours is probably still on rigid. So we do want to change the motion to cylindrical. Now we notice we can set the motion limits too, because right now if we hit play, that spins. Now if we choose over and we go to the slide here and we press play, that goes up. Uh oh, that's not supposed to happen, right? So what we'll end up doing is we'll click minimum and a maximum. And, and you can see, let's go ahead and kind of Put this to the front view. We have these two little triangles right here, right? So let's say let's drag this thing up here. Make it about one inch away. I'll just put a one in there. And now let's rotate. And so now I should be able to grab it, move it up and down, and it's not gonna go through, it's not gonna go off. So finally, just to really make it look like an egg, I want to get these lines off of here, right? So I'll go down to my display settings. I'll say visual style, and I'm just going to choose shaded. And when we first started the video, that's where we were. So you can see there we are. We're completely shaded. And this thing's going to work just like it's supposed to. It looks just like an egg. Okay. And we can press the home button. Now, if we do want to go ahead and take it that extra step and 3D print it, easy peasy, we'll go and we'll say, all right, give me the top half. I'm going to right click it and say save as mesh. Now, I have a bamboo, so I'm using the 3MF format. What's nice about that format is it keeps the correct units. And some of you that are 3D printed long enough, you know you have to get into the scaling and everything else sometimes. So most of you are used to the STL, and you could certainly do that here as well. I use 3MF, so I'll go ahead and click OK. It'll save, right? Then I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom half. Say save as mesh. Then from there, we'll take it in to, for me, I'm going to show you the bamboo slicer. But I've gone ahead and I went up here and I said plus, so we're going to add those two pieces. Now, I do have to make some particular settings here. So I do have to turn supports on. One thing we've also learned about is that putting a raft layer here, just a one layer raft, will make a huge difference. Because... These, this print that you're seeing here, actually I did use the flat surface for. So it did a little bit better, but even with this, it still needs that extra support uh, 
uh, extra surface area. And then for strength on here, I probably do want to go down here to my infill density. And typically on my bamboo, it's set at 15. I found that I really need to make that at least 25. Or what will happen is this threaded, you know, the threaded axle here will actually break off inside there when you're twisting it. So probably want to make those changes on whatever 3D printing software you're using.